every one of us grows as the days pass. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wallahu akhrajakum min butuni ummahatikum la ta'lamuna shay'a. It is Allah who took you out of the wombs of your mothers and you knew nothing. When we were born, did we suddenly come out and say, Salaamu Alaikum, I'm here. Is that what happened? No, it didn't. When we were born, we didn't even make a noise besides crying at a certain stage. It was just crying. It's just the miracle of Isa or Jesus, may peace be upon him, where when he was born, he actually spoke, Inni Abdullah, I am the worshipper of Allah. And you know that that is mentioned in Surah Maryam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide those who have the incorrect belief about Jesus, may peace be upon him, to that which is correct. I mean. So when we were born, we came to this world without really knowing how to speak. There was no sound that was made besides that which did not make sense. But do you know what? A mother who is experienced would be able to differentiate between the cry of a child. So the mother will say, this cry is for hunger. This cry is because the child is perhaps wet. This, this cry is because the child is tired. And this cry, I don't know, I'm worried. Let's go to the doctor. Subhanallah. So this was a gift of Allah and it still continues to be a gift. But as we grew older, we began to say a few words. Why? Because Allah has put within us the development to a degree that he created us from weakness. And slowly we worked up to the point of strength. When we hit the peak, in certain ways we start slowing down once again. And this brings us to another verse of the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah الذي خلقكم من ضعف ثم جعل من بعد ضعف قوة ثم جعل من بعد قوة ضعفا وشيبة. Allah says, It is Allah who has created you in a condition of weakness, and from that weakness He has brought you up to strength, and after that strength. He has then taken you downwards to weakness and gray hair. Weakness and gray hair. Something amazing is when you are young and you are perhaps an infant, you are weak. You depend on people to do your things. And the people around you do it happily. The parents will take you to the doctors happily if you happen to be sick. They will carry you. They will lift you. They will perhaps move you from point A to point B. They will feed you. They will change your nappies. Everything happens happily and every day the one who did all this for you will keep on telling, will keep on asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, grant this child of mine good health. Grant this child long life. Let the child this and let the child that. And do you know when you grow very old, what might happen? May Allah protect us all. We become dependent on someone once again. Maybe it's the same child that we looked after when they were little kids. And now when we are old, they feel lazy to look after us. So they say, oh, I took my dad to the hospital. Oh, I, I, I've been holding my mother. I carried my mother. I fed, I did this and I did that. And so many different things. And at the end of the day, in the heart, one asks a question, when is this going to end? Allahu Akbar, may Allah safeguard us. I hope it doesn't happen to us, but people have said, you know what? Shaitan does come in and says, you know, how long am I going to carry on with this paralyzed mother of mine? May Allah protect us all. So the, the, the issue, the point I'm raising, two things. One is the lesson we have to learn from the verse, obviously, because we read it. And two is the fact that we grow to a peak and at the peak, after a certain point, we start dropping in certain ways. When I say certain ways, I mean physically, physically more than anything else. And subhanallah, it's, it's, it's a gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has kept us so beautifully that as we're young and we're growing, we learn more every day. That's a gift of Allah. What does this mean? You know, when you go to school, when you go to school, subhanallah, you learn Right at the beginning, A, B, C, or Alif, Ba, Ta, and so on. When you get to the next year, you build on what you learned the first year. And then the third year, you build on what you learned the second year. So if you know one plus one, and you learned that the answer is two, that will help you right up to the end of your life. 
It's not like, okay, one plus one was something we learned in grade one, forget about it now. Now if someone asks you what's one plus one, just tell them I don't know. No, it's not a silly question. It is something that you will need to know all along. So we develop and we grow and there is room for improvement and everything we do, we can do better. So as a Muslim, where do we start? Today we're talking to youth, mashallah. Mashallah, the youth, where do you start? What can you do better in? Point number one, your link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can do better. You can do better. You can improve on your link with Allah. I tell you why. Our driving force as Muslimin is the fact that we believe. The others don't believe. They do what they want. Their first point of improvement is perhaps how much money they can earn. So that's their first point of, of improvement. But with us as Muslimin, our first point of improvement is my link with Allah can be better. Every one of us, myself included, my link with Allah can be better. Do you read your five salah? If you do, on what time do you read your five salah? You can improve on the time. If you don't read your five salah, oh, that is something dangerous. You have to do something about it. I tell you why. Belief makes us understand why we are in the world. If I were to ask you, why are you in this world? What would you say? Let's see what you say here. Can some of the guys answer me? Why are you in this world? What is the reason? Everyone says to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Correct. Because Allah says, وَمَا خَلَقُتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created mankind or jinn kind except that they worship me. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained what is this worship. He explained. Worship in a nutshell is to lead your life in such a way that all of it is a preparation for the day you will meet with Allah. That's what it is. That's, that's the meaning. To worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would mean to lead your life in such a way that you are preparing in the best possible way to meet with Allah. So istighfar is part of ibadah. Worshipping Allah alone is the primary item that we look at. To do the acts of worship in accordance with what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam has taught is something of prime importance. But what you need to know is from the point of birth right up to the point of death, I must be conscious of the fact that I don't know when I'm going to die. I have no clue. This might be your last few moments. It might be my last few moments. I don't know. So if I were to die now and say I meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what will I say? I said, you know what, we were having fun. I just went to school, I learned, I was about to qualify, I was going to do this, but then you took me away. That's not good enough. It's not a good enough answer. He said, you know what, I was, I really, I was earning a salary and I earned so much and I got a promotion and I earned much more and I bought a car and a house and I was so happy and I married the most pretty girl on, on, on the face of the globe and you know what, we were about to have kids and then you took me away. All these answers are material answers. The proper answer is, Ya Allah, whatever opportunity you gave me, I seized it to develop a link with you. Forgive me wherever I have faltered, I tried my best. This is the link. And this is why I say, we can do better with our link with Allah because we don't know when we are going. That's the difference. A lot of people running behind materialism. Let me tell you, your test is, your test is, whilst you are in the world, Look at what is happening to others and learn a lesson for yourself. Let me give you an example. There are so many people out there. They were born, they lived, they died. What did they achieve? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. But the world says this person was very successful. Why? Because he was, by the time he died, he was the CEO of a multi-million dollar company. Wow, he did so well in his life. Let's be honest. Is that called doing wealthy? Uh, doing well in your life now what will happen to him he died he did not develop his link with Allah so Allah sends us to the world for an examination and then he takes us out once the examination is over he sends us in the world for an examination and he takes us out you are here and soon you will be out there are others who came in and they are out there are some who are still waiting to come in and then they will come out short period of time listen carefully what i'm saying is very very serious you have a short space of time to pass an examination and walk out you have a very short space of time to pass your examination and to walk out what is the exam the exam is allah has put obstacles in your path watch out be careful for them 
You know, a lot of the youngsters like to play games. I don't know, do you know what is the PSP 3 and PSP 4 and so on? I'm sure you're aware of it. I see the smile. So we're shy to say, yes, I know. But anyway, I know you know. So you have all these games that you play. When you play a game, say for example, it's an ordinary game that a person might be playing uh, and say uh, f racing cars, okay? So as you're racing, there are obstacles. They can never ever have a game that is just a straight road. You just have to press the accelerator and switch off and they see who did the best. There's no game like that. That's boring. They have to have bends and turns and potholes and obstacles and something to do with something else. You must avoid hitting here and then you must go as fast as you can and you do this so that you can finish and you have protected yourself from the obstacles and you were at the finish line first. Am I right? So say you were at the finish line number 10. What will you do? Let me see if some of the youngsters know the answer here. If, for example, you played a game for the first time and you finished off number 10, what, what are you going to do? Start again. Exactly what I wanted to hear. You're going to try again. Why? Because now you want to do a bit better. A bit better. So I tell you, in life, life is a test. It's not a game. It's reality. So Allah says, look, you die once, there's no coming back. There's no coming back. But we do you a favor. When you realize that you're coming out second and third, there is something known as tawbah. Turn back to us. We will, come, we will let you come out first. Are you following the point? But you remember your... Like I say, your life is such, you, there will be obstacles. There will be a beautiful car dangling in the front. And you know what? You've got half the money to, earn the, to, to buy the vehicle. You don't have the other half. Now, it is a test of Allah. Are you going to do something haram to get that car? Number one. Number two is, is that car your main focus in life? Very important. Is that car your main focus in life? If it is, you might achieve it. Then when you die, what will happen? Then nobody's going to bury that Lamborghini with you in your grave to say, wow, big achievement. Here it is. Bury this man. That's not going to happen. So understand that with the link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the most important things is to know that there are so many tests that I need to understand. Stay away from haram. You know, zina or adultery is very easily committable depending on the environment you're staying in. The winner is he who protects, she who protects himself or herself from it. The reason is, and when we talk of zina, for those who don't know the, English, the Arabic language who might be listening to us, we're talking here of adultery. For example, it's just cited as an example. So to stay away from it, you would be protecting your wheels from hitting a pothole. Imagine you're driving and you are in this race and you see a huge pothole and you say, let's see if this car can take it. Aren't you a fool? Aren't you a big fool? Because you know the, 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 those big magnums, you know those wheels, the alloy wheels, they, they cannot take even the slightest of a pothole. In my part of the world, they call it buckling the wheel, which means that rim would actually get bent in such a way that you have to take all four out because you cannot have three that look the same and then one suddenly is a biscuit tire or it is something totally different. No, you change all of them or you repair the one if you can. So the point being raised is when you see haram in your path, consider it an opportunity to get closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by staying away. So when you see something that you're not supposed to look at, to lower your gaze for the sake of Allah, you should be happy to say, Ya Allah, I'm passing my test here. Subhanallah. Time for salah, you're so lazy and you, you, you just get up and you say, you know what, no matter what, I'm sitting and I'm not going to move until I get out of my bed and I go and read my salah. You say, Ya Allah, I thank you for helping me pass the test. As cozy as the bed was because of the air condition or because of whatever else. And as tired as I was, I got up because of you. This might be the last Salatul Fajr that I will ever read. Could be. Then if you die, you're such a happy person. Imagine. Allahu Akbar. So why we say you can do better?